do better than that. Come on, everybody. Before you take your seat, why don't you turn to your neighbor, tell them with all honesty that you look much better than you did last time I saw you. Amen, 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 amen. Good morning, everybody. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, let's put our hands together for this wonderful team. Phenomenal job. Yeah, Pastor Francis, uh, it's true that uh, I've been here, I think uh, the last time I was here, it was five years ago. We were facing the same direction, but in a different uh, uh, <laughs> building. So I can see that the Lord has uh, promoted us from one glory to another. I would like to congratulate you. You guys have done phenomenally well. Amen. Just appreciate yourself for this wonderful building. <laughs> my goodness. This is beautiful. Amen. I would like to pay my homage to... Uh, Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice, all the way uh, in the United States of America. I know they are watching, and thank you so very much for an honor, again, for trusting me with this uh, opportunity to stand in your altar this morning and be a blessing to your church. So um, may the good God bless you in the States and even for your assignment over there. Everybody, come on, let's appreciate mom and dad. Amen, amen. To so many of you that I can recognize your faces, thank you so very much, and I believe we'll get to interact uh, just before the service is over. Amen. Pastor David, thank you so much for your assignment this morning, and most amen. I'm missing uh, uh, George. Oh, he's around. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Let's get to the business, um, because our time is a bit limited now. We, we need to dash for the second and the third service. And of course, the Queen of Africa sends her greetings. Um, I rebuke the spirit of jealous. <laughs> Amen. Why some of you are not clapping? Amen. What's the matter with you? I thought Brian would put up a picture there, but it's fine. All right, let's go to, um, let's go to the book of First Samuel, chapter nine. The book of First Samuel, chapter nine. If you have a manual Bible, the book of Samuel is between the book of Genesis and Revelations. First book of Samuel, chapter 9. Uh, there was a Benjamite, uh, if we do it in King... Oh, thank you. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zero, the son of Bechoreth, the son of Athia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a choice and handsome son whose name was Saul, and there was not more handsome person than he among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upwards. I like the Bible. Look at the description of the uh, Saul's appearance there. And his beauty or his handsomeness. The Bible says it was from his shoulders upwards. So the danger with somebody who is beautiful or handsome from their shoulders upwards is that their heart is not included. So their beauty is just from here upwards. Uh, have you ever been drawn to certain people by how they look? But as, as closer as you get to them, you realize 
They are, they, are, they are not as beautiful as they look because they've got issues of their heart. Yeah, let's go. Um, verse 3. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son, Please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. Take one, it's key there. And so they passed through the mountains of Ephraim. If you have a manual Bible or you're taking notes, underline the word Ephraim. Through the land of Shalisha, underline Shalisha, and, but they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shalim. Wanted to underline Shalim, and they passed, and they were not there. And they passed through the land of Benjamites, but they did not find them. When they had come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father cease caring about the donkeys and become more worried about us. The next verse. And he said unto him, Look now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is honorable man, or he's an honorable man. All that he says surely come to pass. And let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. The rest of the uh, story, please read it when you get home, ladies and gentlemen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the story about... Saul anointed to be a king. Let me just uh, put it this way that uh, if this was a movie, we would have God as the staring. I mean, we'll have God as an author. We'll have Samuel. Um, I beg your pardon. We'll have Saul. As a main character, we'll have Sam, Samuel as a, a co-staring. And, uh, of course, there's a servant whose name was not mentioned to us, and Kish's father. Now, God makes his intention clear to us that he needs to anoint Saul as a king. Um, the purpose for that was to deliver Israel from the Philistines. So Saul needs Samuel to anoint him. And Samuel needs Saul to anoint. And God needs a king. So the person that you're seated next to this morning, they need you and you need them. You are inferior and superior at the same time to the person that you're seated next to. A doctor who performs a heart surgery in the theater, when his shoe is broken, even though he can fix the arteries and the veins of the heart, he still needs a shoemaker. So look at your neighbor and say, you need me, and I need you. By that, it means that there are some things there are some of the things that your neighbor can do which you cannot do. Now, the story, it's triggered by the donkeys which went missing. Now, a sense of loss in our lives does two things. Every time you lose something, you have to search for it. In other words, every time you lose something, there's a sense of uh, a movement which is triggered. And that will propel you to search. So Saul's loss compels him to move. A sense of loss can cause you to discover something of a greater value. Uh, for an example, hypothetically uh, speaking, uh, you lose... Or you drop a coin. You've got coins right here in your currency, right? 
Um, when you, you drop a coin and it rolls under your bed, and there you are on your knees. You're looking for the coin which you've just dropped, but you find a piece of earring which has been missing for a month. So something of less value has led you to something of greater value. So when you were kneeling down, you didn't know that you were, you were about to have a greater discovery of something that you needed. No, that, 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 that experience, ladies and gentlemen, it's called serendipity. Serendipity is an English word which means the occurrence of events by chance. Have you ever been so broke that you, you desire to pick up a, a thousand shilling just on thicker road? <laughs> huh? Do you pick it? Would you find it when you, when you are looking for it? You can't. But, but there are times whereby you are broke, you're like, what can I do? I'd, I don't even know what to do. And you decide to do laundry. And when you're busy, you know, uh, putting your shirt, trousers, um, in the whatever you're washing with, and then you hear a, a, a strange sound on the pocket of a jacket or something. When you, lo and behold, then there is a it's a it's a it's a it's a thousand shilling. Hello, and then now your cha your plans changes now. You know you take a shower or whatever you go to TRM. <laughs> so that discovery it's called serendipity. So I know we've got needs. We came to church because we love God and it's our culture to do so. But it is in this service where God is going to give you something that you've been trusting him for years. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm going to cut my long story short. Come on, come on, come on. We will do the rest in maybe other services. Okay. Now, when we start this journey, it is important, ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says we have to be prayerful to God or we have to ask God to order our steps. And Kish says to his soul, I mean to his son's soul, pick one of the servants. This tells us that Kish had so many servants. So the servant whom he was going to pick is significant for his journey. There are certain things that we must be very careful when we do. Um, if you are to get a life partner, you have to have the spirit of discernment if that person is tied up to your future. If you are to start a business, you have to be mindful that the people that you pick up as business partners are people that are hooked up to your future. You know, I normally tell young people, uh, some get to be so stubborn when you advise them whom not to marry. Because it happens right here in church. And some goes with the saying like, no, pastor, love is blind. Have you ever, do you have that saying here? And I tell such young people, and say, if you think love is blind, then marriage will open your eyes. You marry a right person, you are completed. If you marry a wrong person, then you are finished. You see, when you marry a wrong person, even the devil leaves you alone. It's not even going to bother you. Because you have married his representative. Look at your neighbor and say, you must descend. You must descend. Kish says, pick up one seventh. One seventh. And you will learn with time how significant this seventh was. Are we together? Now, now, let's leave that for... Now, their journey starts in a place called Ephraim. They come to a place called Shalisha. This is in verse 5. They come to a place called Shalim. From Shalim, they come to a place called Benjamin. From Benjamin, they come to a place called Zuf. From Zuf, they come to a place called Rama. Um, how many of us know that uh, everything that is written in the Bible has a meaning. God was not just, you know, wasting pages when he ordered prophets 
and the scribes, those who put the Bible together. So every meaning or every place that is mentioned in the Bible has a meaning. And um, in our presentation this morning, I will want to therefore go through the meaning of the places which they have passed through searching for the donkeys. The first place that they started looking for donkeys, it's called Ephraim. Now, Ephraim means fruitfulness. Now, the donkeys went missing in Ephraim. They started looking for the donkeys in Ephraim. And then, now, the, 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 the caution is that you would ask yourself is, why would we even lose donkeys in the place of fruitfulness? What were these donkeys looking for if they could leave a, a, a place which was full of, of, of everything that they might even need? So this shows us that in life, you can lose things in the place of fruitfulness where everything is going fine, where you have a, a good job, where you are happily married, where you serve God, and so forth and so on. If God wants to promote you, you can still experience some loss in the place of fruitfulness. And because God wants to push, sometimes we get too comfortable with where we are because everything is fine. But if God wants to promote you, he can snatch something out of you. And the question is, this is Zimmerman, right? How many of us were born in Zimmerman? Ha! Huh. Only one. The rest of us, where are we coming from? Is Lee? Hello? You see, this is the point where I'm coming to. Only one person was born here. The rest of us were born from somewhere. I was sharing this joke with somebody. There's a place called Eastley, right? Yeah, so the guy was driving us uh, just during the course of the week. I was asking him, why are there so many Peters here? You know, why would everybody be called Peter? <laughs> because when we were passing in Eastley, they were pushing some carts. You know, you know those guys who were pushing those carts. So I just hear him say, Peter, Peter. <laughs> I asked him later on, he said, no, 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 I was saying pass, pass. <laughs> I was also surprised why the Peters are not even responding when they say Peter. <laughs> All right, where was I? Peter. Oh, God. I was saying that the reason why we might have found that we might be finding ourselves in Zimmerman today or even in Nairobi, it could be that we have lost something in life. There are some of us that who have lost parents at an early age, and that has forced you to be a breadwinner. There's somebody that have lost a job somewhere and you moved in this place in search of a job. But the picture which God has is that if you have never experienced that loss. You wouldn't be here today. And possibly you wouldn't be hearing the message which you're hearing today. And you wouldn't be meeting certain people that are, 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 are attached to your destiny. So sometimes way down in future, we will be grateful of the things which we have lost because God had something in, the few, I mean, in mind for us. Talk to me somebody. Now, from Ephraim, they came to a place called Shalisha. They're still searching for the donkeys. And when they get there, still they could not find the donkeys. Shalisha means a place of three valleys. Now, this is what happens in Shalisha. Shalisha, you have a mountaintop experience. In other words, you come to a place whereby you, when you look down there, you can see that which you are searching for. But for you to get to where you saw the donkeys, you have to go down the hill and cross the valley. And in the process, you lose sight of the donkeys which you have seen yesterday. How many of us have ever been to a mountaintop where everything it's, it's promising? It looks promising. The future is bright. 
You are called for a job interview. You think this is it. Somebody promised to marry you. You think this is it. You have all the promises clear in your life. But tomorrow when you get up, everything that was positive tends to be negative. That place and that experience is called a Shalisha experience. But I love God through his word. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Come on, somebody. In life, you have to go through some valleys in search of what God has promised you. Ezekiel says, I was in the valley that was filled of dry bone. And it's God who asked me, can this dry bones leave? He said, oh God, you alone know. And God said, prophesy. I am here to declare to somebody who is going through the valley of filled with dry bones. God is saying, it's up to you if you will open up your mouth and prophesy. Those bones will come back to life. So Shalisha is an experience. The third place which they pass through, it's called Shalim. They are still in search of donkeys. Shalim means a place of Jacobs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we go to the jungle, National Geographic, these animals, they have strange behaviors and they are different ways of approach. A lion, if it wants to eat you, it kills you first it's gonna relax and feast on what it has killed so jacobs they don't have time for that jacobs whatever they take a bite of you while you're screaming for your life they will be chewing you alive so the experience of going through shalim is to be a laughing stock have you ever been to in a, in, a, in, a, in a scenario where you're meeting some people you've been to school with and uh, they're introducing to you their husband or to their wife, they're showing you their kids, they're showing you what they're driving, they're, they're, they're telling you where they live, they're giving you a business card of the business that you're running and you, you last saw them 15 years, 10 years ago, but you have nothing to show. And, and, and even though they are not laughing, you can tell that they are laughing at you. That place is called Shalim experience. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you're going to go through in search of what is lost. But I'm here to encourage somebody that God is busy working something in your spirit. He's, he's building a testimony for where he's leading you. Don't lose focus Keep on searching for what you know is lost. Eventually, you're going to get to the place where God is calling you. From Shalim, they could not find the donkeys. And they come to a place called Benjamin. When they get to Benjamin, the Bible's, I mean, Benjamin means a place of the right hand or my right hand. The right hand speaks of favor. The right hand speaks of power. The right hand speaks of strength. So things are getting better now. Say to your neighbor, things are getting better now. Ah, that was a boring neighbor. Get a better neighbor and say, things are getting better now. <laughs> amen, amen. The, 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 the former, <laughs> the first neighbor is Peter, Amen. Now, <laughs> have you ever wondered why every church has a pulpit? Huh? It's because of its assignment. The word pulpit is two English words there. It's pool and pit. In other words, when we come to a church, we are in different pits of lives. There are those who are in pits of sickness, of lack, or whatever the case is. So when I come and stand here and I'm preaching to you, what I'm literally doing is I'm pulling you out of the pit. So Benjamin is a place where you are strengthened or you're being pulled out of your pit by the right hand, which is the hand of strength and support. So don't come to church 
and go back the same way you came. You must come out of the pit in which you are. Somebody say, I'm coming out this morning. Come on, say it like you believe and say, I'm coming out this morning. Now, from, uh, from Benjamin, they come to a place called Zuf, a place of abundance in search of the lost donkeys, and they still can't find them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time between Saul and the servant, we are hearing them conversing. We don't hear them talk in Benjamin. We don't hear them talk in Shalisha. We don't hear them talk in Shalim. We don't hear them talk in uh, Benjamin. For the first time, they are conversing. And this was the conversation. Saul says to his servant, we need to go back. Because my dad, by now, he should be worried about us. Isn't it amazing that every time you feel like giving up, you are at the verge of your breakthrough. I mean, look at how close Saul was to hit his breakthrough. Because Zuf means a place of breakthrough. I mean, a place of abundance. I am here to encourage few people who might have felt like I am giving up. I'm here to encourage you. The reason why you're feeling like giving up is because you are too close to your miracle. Come on, give your neighbor a high five and say you're too close to your miracle. Oh, yes, baby. Don't give up. Don't quit. You are too close to your miracle. The devil is a liar. So is his mother-in-law. I'm not getting back without my breakthrough. I'm not going back through the things that I've been through without anything to show. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because you are in the place of breakthrough. You are in the place of abundance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where now the significance of a servant whom he chose become uh, resourceful. Because the Bible says the servant said to Saul, no, master, we can't get back. But if he has just chosen any servant, that servant would have said, yes, sir. But the servant says to Saul, we can't go back. And the reason being one, I mean, the next stop from where we are. The next city from where we are, there's a breakthrough. I'm here to encourage somebody and say, your next stop from here. Oh, come on, church. We might as well have church here. I said your next praise from here. Your next offering from here. Your next prayer from here. Your next fasting from here. You are just only left with one effort. You are too close to your breakthrough. You are too close to your answer. You are too close to your miracle. The next stop from where you're standing. God is about to bless you because he's the reward of those who diligently seek him. And he says, the next stop from here. But listen to Saul. Saul says, I understand that there's an, uh, you're saying there's a prophet, there's a breakthrough, that somebody's going to tell us where we are headed. But we have exhausted our funds. I've spent all that I had. I don't have money to move to the next level because we can't go to the prophet empty-handed. But the servant, not only did he encourage him to go to the next move, but he was willing to go down, to go deep in his pocket to say, I will finance the next move. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it great not to only have people, not only to, to, to have people around us who are willing to support us to the next move by saying, but who are also willing to finance the next move. And our, I believe that our mom and dad, they need people like those. That not only are we going to back them up by saying, let's go to the next level. But we will also say that by signing a check. We will also say that by dropping an offering. I need friends. I need, I need people around me who will support what I'm doing. Not only by saying it, but by willing to put their lives down for the next move. 
Oh yes, I wish I can talk to somebody up in here. Say amen, somebody. Now the last step or place which they visit, it's called Rama. Now Rama means a place of elevation. Somebody say, it's my season of elevation. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen, God is about to reward you of all the things that you've been through. God is about to reward you of coming out of the place of fruitfulness. God is about to reward you of being in Shalim. God is about to reward you from being in Shalisha. God is about to reward you of going through Benjamin. God is about to reward you of going through Zuf. So all you needed was to hold your faith together and know that God will never disappoint you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God was busy building testimony out of your life. Come on, somebody help me out. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise. Now the Bible says, are you going to help me preach? All right. <laughs> Still have some more services. Let me take it easy. Now, the Bible says when they got to Ramah, uh, they found a little girl somewhere and she was minding her own business and they asked her, do you know prophet so and so? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says she told them, the gentleman you're looking for, he has just passed through here. If you run a little bit harder or walk faster, you can catch up with him. In other words, God is bringing us to a season of divine connections. Amen, 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 amen. The fact that you're going to knock from this door to that door, being referred from here to there, that time it's over. The next door you're going to knock from tomorrow will be a door with your answer. The next phone call you are about to make, it's going to the right person. I declare that God is bringing us to a season of divine connection. Give your neighbor a high five and say divine connection. Amen, amen. Say divine connections. Oh yes, oh yes, you're about to get the right job. You're about to get the right man. You're about to get the right woman. You're about to get the right house. You're about to get the right car. Come on, somebody help me out this morning. Somebody shout divine connections. Come on, Brian. That's your message right there. Amen. Divine connections. <laughs> Say yes. Now, when they get to the prophet... The Bible says, he says, I knew you were coming. That is the first thing that he said. The Lord spoke to me and he gave me the word yesterday. This is where it becomes interesting. The prophet says, as for the donkeys that you have been worried about, that you have been searching, they have been found. So I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about the loss. The journey that you have been through, it got nothing to do with the loss that you have experienced. God was just getting your attention to the bigger picture. Amen. I know you have been crying over the loss. I know you have been mourning over the loss. I know your heart has been broken over the loss. But God sent me from Polokwane, South Africa to come and encourage you. That it had nothing to do with the donkeys. God has a bigger picture. Some of you will be grateful. I said some of you will be grateful for that loss. Ah, uh, come on, help me. I said some of you will be grateful for that loss. Amen. More especially if I were to preach this message to ladies. There are some guys... Who broke your hearts. And some to an extent that they gave you a child and they denied to be the fathers. But look, look, at what the, look at who you are. Or look at what you have become out of the experience. 
You are financially independent. You are more educated. You are more wiser than you were before. So if it wasn't of that donkey. Some of you after this service, you just have to go get his picture. Put it on Facebook and say, thank God for this donkey. If you like, put it on King James and say, thank God for this AWS. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five and say, now I've got a bigger picture. I've got a bigger picture. God was working something greater in my life. I've got a bigger picture. I'm here to tell you, wipe your tears. It's your season to arise and shine. God has a greater blessing for you. It's a season of elevation. It's a season of divine favor. It's a season that God has remembered you. God is about to pay back the years. My time is up. Let's get up and give the Lord a praise. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Woo! Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. When you went through that loss, it was painful. It was painful. I know when you were searching throughout those places, it was painful. But God is saying, I needed to draw your attention for something of a greater value. And this morning, there's an elevation coming to your life. In Jesus' name. All those years of disappointment, of pain. God was drawing your attention to the bigger picture. Lift up your hands, I pray for you this morning. Shamandalava. Come on, help me, brother. Father, bless your sons and daughters this morning. I don't know what they see that they've been through. Some of them, they were about to give up. Some are still in Ephraim. They are wondering why are they losing things in the place of fruitfulness. Some, oh God, they are in Shalisha. They are going through valleys, hills. I ask you to strengthen them. I ask you to strengthen those that are going through Shalim, where they're just a laughing stock. I ask you that you strengthen them. I pray for those that are in Benjamin. Strengthen their right hand. In the name of Jesus. I encourage those that are in Zuf. That they are too close to their miracle. We're not going home the same way we came in this place. We're not going home the same way we came in this place. Father God is a season that we are rising and shining right now for your glory has come. It's the season that Father God we get elevated. We get elevated for a time such as this. Many of us didn't know that Saul deserved that anointing based on the things which he has gone through. In the name of Jesus that which this church has gone through Reward us. Reward our mom and dad, Bishop Jim and Pastor Alice for what they've gone through, for every loss which they've gone through. Reward them. Bring them to Rama, a place of elevation. Bring leaders in this church to a place of elevation. Bring Kenya to a place of elevation. Bring businessmen and women in this house who have gone through some loss. To a place of elevation. Embrace us, oh God, with your loving arms this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. 
Nah.